Michael and Carly help cover for Sunny, and Alexis makes an alarming discovery. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and give this video a like up. Outside of the Quartermain boathouse, and in the rain, Sonny shoots Jagger in the chest. He falls to the ground, Sonny walks up to him, and plugs another bullet into him. Michael walks up, and Sonny explains Kate's was coming after his sister. Michael tells his dad that he doesn't want to hear any more. Michael says mom is at the house and will give him an alibi, and he'll take care of Jagger. In the mansion, Nina talks to Brooklyn and Chase in the living room. Tracy enters, covered in food and having been struggling with the devil baby, otherwise known as Ace. She explains she and Lois have been trying to get him settled for the last half hour. Tracy asks Brooklyn to give it a try, and if she can't quiet him, then she wants Chase to arrest Ace for disturbing the peace. Brooklyn walks Ace around and gets him to settle down. She even brings him downstairs, and Chase takes over. She mentions how she can't wait for Chase to be a dad. Tracy tells them to get a room. Upstairs, a soaked Sonny finds Carly and pulls her into a room. He needs her help and says if anyone asks, to tell them that they've been up here for the last half hour. She asks why. Moments later in the foyer, Sonny asks Carly if she is ready for this, and she says she is. They walk into the living room, and Sonny tucks his shirt in. Tracy is shocked, and Chase comments. Looks like someone already found a room. John Stamos got rejected by the Church of Scientology two years before making his acting debut in General Hospital. In Drew's office, he and Willow passionately kiss. They pull away, and Willow can't believe this happened again. Drew says it's his fault, and he's sorry. She cries she loves her husband, and doesn't think of herself as a wife who cheats. He says she's not that person, and she got caught up in a weak moment with someone else having a weak moment. He knows she loves Michael, but honestly, he wishes he had met her first. Willow says Drew didn't meet her first, and Michael did. She loves her husband and he stood by her in her darkest times. So what happened here has to stay locked in her heart. Drew won't tell anyone. He loves Michael too, and he only wants the best for her. She needs to get home, and he offers to drive her as the roads are messy in this storm. Back at the Quartermain boathouse, Michael calls Chase about the murder, claiming he found Kate's on the dock. Willow and Drew soon arrive and ask him what happened. Back in the living room, Nina approaches Sonny and Carly and asks if they are back together. Sonny explains they were just talking, and things got heated. Chase, who stepped out, returns, having spoken to Michael. He relays news of the shooting, but not who was shot, and notes that Anna is on her way. Tracy wants everyone to go, but Chase explains nobody can leave as they'll all have to be questioned. Down at the boathouse, Michael explains to Drew and Willow that he came down to make sure everything was secure with this storm and found Kate's. He called Chase, and he's coming down now to secure the scene. Michael asks Drew to take Willow to the house and ensure she's safe, and he'll handle things here. Drew and Willow head to the house, where they tell everyone that it is Agent Kate's who was shot, and Michael found the body. Carly gives Sonny a look. Back at the boathouse, Michael gives Chase a statement and asks to get back to his wife and family. He heads out, and outside detectives are taking photos of the crime scene. Chase tells Anna that Michael found the body, and there was no weapon and no bullet casings left behind. Anna thinks about Jagger, how he was a good man to Robin once upon a time, and how his life went so wrong. She calls his death tragic. Anna says Cates didn't make himself well-liked in town, so they will have a lot of suspects to consider. Up in the mansion, Nina tells Drew she's sorry about McConkie, and sometimes there is nothing you can do to prepare you for certain things. Drew says, death is one of those things. Tracy feels waiting around to be questioned is pointless as they all know who killed Cates. She announces it was Sonny. She says Sonny hated him, 
and Kate's just happened to be shot the night, Sonny came to check on his children. Sam arrives at Alexa's place. A worried Alexis explains that Christina grabbed her car keys and took off. Sam asks where she could have gone, but Alexis has no idea. Christina goes to Adela's grave as the storm rages on. She brought the Mickey Mouse doll that Sonny gave her weeks ago. She tells her daughter how sorry she is for what happened at the funeral, and that she deserved to be celebrated for the gift that she is. Christina wishes she could go back in time and change things, but no matter what she wishes, it doesn't change the fact that she's gone. Christina cries that she doesn't want to live without her daughter. She promises to never forget her likes and her dislikes. She says she loves her so much and always will before finally leaving. Christina returns home and Alexis and Sam get her a blanket, noticing she's soaked and shivering. Christina puts her things down and Sonny's gun that she took is in her bag. They ask where she was and she explains she went to the cemetery. Christina cries that she needed to apologize to her baby for what happened at the burial. Alexis says what happened was because everyone's emotions were so high. Christina admits she doesn't want to go on without her daughter. Sam embraces her. Sam and Christina sit down, and Sam talks with her sister about losing Leela. Christina asks if she dreams about Leela, as she can't stop dreaming about Adela. She is always happy in her dreams, and sometimes, she is older and experiencing things like the first day of school. Then, Christina wakes up and knows she's gone. Christina sobs that her dreams will never come true because of Ava, and she must ensure Ava pays. Christina eventually heads upstairs, and Alexis thanks Sam for talking to her sister about her grief. Sam says she's well past what happened, and Christina will get there too. Alexis is worried and feels her focus on revenge isn't healthy. Sam considers it a result of Christina's emotions being all over the place. Alexis thanks her for her help and tells her to go home. Sam heads out, and Alexis grabs Christina's things. She ends up finding the gun in her daughter's bag. On the highway, Jason finds Izia has been hit and left for dead on the side of the road. He checks for a pulse and then calls 911 to report the hit and run. Nearby, Boyle walks Adela through the rain and into the woods. Ava cries that she has a daughter who depends on her. Ava wonders if she's ever killed someone, as it changes you forever. Ava explains that she was where Boyle is once. She killed a woman, and regrets it every day. Boyle notes it sounds like karma, and cocks the trigger. Ava screams, don't do it. Suddenly, Jason appears with his gun drawn and aimed at Boyle. Jason tells Boyle to drop her gun and let Ava go. After a moment to think, Boyle finally drops her gun, and Ava picks it up and aims it at her. Ava gloats, how is this for karma? Boyle says, this is where she says she has a daughter too. Ava doesn't care and asks Jason to take care of this. Jason isn't getting involved, but she says he is involved. Ava is at her limit. She's tired of being pushed around and having people play games with her life. She aims the gun and says, no more. Ava tells Boyle there was a time she would have shot her, but not now, and she'll leave it to the professional. Jason grabs Boyle and tells Ava they are in this together. He orders Ava to look around and ensure nothing is left behind at the scene. He pulls out his phone and calls the police. Rick shows up at the hospital with flowers for Liz. Liz has no intention of accepting them, but she will break them up and give them to her patients. He asks her to dinner, but she says no way. He thinks he'll circle back around and ask her again later, and he hopes she's changed her mind by then. Portia runs into Jordan in the halls and asks how much she knows about Rick. She reveals Rick has taken over Heather's case and wants to know if he could win it. Jordan says from what she knows Rick is a very good lawyer. Rick finds Liz walking the halls and brings her some coffee. He is impressed she's head nurse now, and she asks if he's still practicing law. Rick says he is, and is also staying out of trouble. He is on the road to self-improvement, 
which he should have started earlier. Liz asks about Molly. Rick says she's being strong, and he's proud of her. Rick changes the subject to ask what she thinks about Heather. Liz says Heather has a soft spot for her because of Franco. She asks if Rick is representing her. Rick admits he is. She warns him that if he takes her on as a client, then he'll never make friends in this town. He jokes that's never been a problem for him, and aside from Molly, only one other person's opinion matters to him. Another nurse needs Liz's help, and Rick asks if they can continue this another time. Liz says she's off in 20 minutes and suggests they meet downstairs.